Good evening, my fellow fiends, and welcome to Scream Radio, hosted by Jimmy Flame. Ow! <laughs> and today we bring to you one of my favorite ghoulish tales from the mind of Edgar Allan Poe, one of my all-time favorites. A traveler arrives at the Usher Mansion to visit his old friend Roderick Usher. Upon arriving, however, he discovers that Roderick and his sister Madeline have been afflicted with a mysterious milady. Roderick's senses have become painfully acute while Madeline has become nearly catatonic. That evening, Roderick tells his guest of an old Usher family curse. Any time there has been more than one Usher child, all of the siblings have gone insane and died horrible deaths. As the days wear on, the effects of the curse reach their terrifying climax. <laughs> Join us as we proudly present the fall of the House of Usher. NBC presents Short Story. Today, Edgar Allan Poe. Today, a short story from Poe's Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque, of fears of being buried alive, a classic from the mind and talent of Edgar Allan Poe. Our tale begins in just a moment. And now, The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. This is the history of the House of Usher. I am leaving it as my last will and testament because before this year is over, the cavernous tarn will close over the gables of our decadent home. It was written by our ancestors many years ago that when the rains are blood red, the House of Usher will crumble to the earth. There are three members of the Usher family living, two in direct descent, the Lady Madeline and her twin brother, Roderick. I was engaged to marry Roderick long before I knew my cousin. It is the custom for the Usher family to intermarry. The Lady Madeline has been confined to bed these many weeks, waiting for death, waiting for the last days of her life to pass quietly. <laughs> I have so little time left, Roderick. I must see Charles before I die. Charles Wilson is tied up in London on business. He can't come down here every time you've a whim to see him. Oh, this is no whim. It's just a matter of days before I... Don't be impatient with me. Sister, please. Oh, afraid of the truth, Roderick? You've always been afraid of me. I can read your mind so easily. Look at me, brother. Let's not argue again. You've always wanted me to die. You've waited for it year after year, praying and hoping that I die, leaving you free to inherit the house and the fortune. But you'll be fooled. Look. Look at the rain. This isn't you speaking. It's the fever. Fever or not, the rain is turning red, isn't it? Yes, it... It seems that way at times. Each day it will be redder and redder. And darker and... Madeline. Afraid, brother? Are you afraid of blood-red rains? The doctor said you should have rest and quiet. You you weaken yourself when you're excited. Where's Dina? I don't know. I'm not her keeper. She's downstairs, probably, buried in that romantic nonsense that she reads. Every girl likes to read romantic stories, Rod. Heaven help her when she becomes your wife. Call her for me, will you? The doctor's orders were that you're not to be disturbed. Call her, Rod. Do as I say. For your own good, I... I'll get even with you someday. Dina. 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 Madeline. Dina. Did you call me Lady Madeline? Yes, Dina Charles. Come here, my dear. Is there something I can do for you? Yes. I want to see Charles Wilson before... 
before I die. I told you he was busy, Maddie. Tell Talbot to hitch up a coach in Ford, Dina. Go to London tonight. Tell Charles I must see him right away. Bring him back with you. I'll not have Dina go out in this weather. But, Rod, Dina, please go. Don't listen to Rod. Do this for me. I will not have strangers dragged into our family secrets. Charles Wilson is no stranger. He's the only one who knows the secret of the house of Usher. I don't like leaving you, cousin. The doctor will be here shortly. Hurry, my dear, and bring Charles back. I forbid it, Dina. If I don't see Charles tonight, I'll be buried alive. Not able to live. Not able to die. We'll never get through to London tonight, Mum. Not in this weather. Not in a million years. It ain't a night for humans to be a bat. The lady madam is dying. The least we can do is grant her her last wish. Dina! Dina! Quickly, Talbot, before Lord Rick tries to catch up with us. Dina, did you hear me call you? Yes, I heard you, cousin. Try to protect you, child, because I love you. I don't want any harm to come to my future wife. Please, Robert. What, you turn for me when I touch you? I don't know. Afraid of me? I... I... Answer me, Dina. Are you afraid of me? Yes. But you loved me once. That was before we returned to the house of Osher. And you're going anyway? Yes, Roderick. For Madeline's sake. Are you ready, Mum? Yes. Yes, Talbot, ready. We'll be back by midnight, Roderick. All right, cousin. Or else the lady Madeline might not live long enough to get her last wish. Did she leave, Roderick? Yes. Madeline, why don't you confide in me? Why must you call in strangers when you know how it humiliates me? I can't trust you, Roderick. Ever since we were children, you've kept one secret from me. What is that secret, Madeline? <laughs> That's one thing you never read aloud of me. What is that secret, Maddie? Leave me alone, brother. I'm ill. You're dying, Madeline. You know you're dying. The secret won't do you any good. Now, what is it? Please, Roderick. Tell me, Madeline, or you won't live to die the way you think you will. <laughs> Tell me, or by heaven, I'll force it out of you. <laughs> This is his house, Mum. Thank you, Talbot. Mr. Wilson, is he here? Yes, sir. Why, Dina Asher, what are you doing in London at this hour of the night? Come in, my dear. The Lady Madeline sent me. Great heavens, child, your clothes are dressed. Come on in. I'll fix you some hot tea. Oh, we haven't time, Charles. Madeline wants to see you at once. Please come with me right away. The doctor doesn't think she'll live through the night. Madeline? Dying? Oh, she's been ill for months. Charles, you wouldn't know her anymore. Why didn't you let me know before this? Roderick wouldn't let me. Roderick? But why? I can't explain now, Charles. Believe me when I say it's important that you come at once. Talbot's waiting outside. I'm frightened for Madeline. We've got to be back by midnight. <laughs> You came in time, Doctor. Lady Usher, you shouldn't allow your brother to excite you. There's a cruel streak in him at times. Surprisingly like my grandfather. What time is it? Midnight. Here, drink this. It will give you strength. I can't move. Uh, lean against me. There. <sighs> Dr. Bain, you've attended all my family, haven't you? Yes, Lady Usher. You've been closer to us than almost anyone. If I ask you for an honest answer, would you give it to me? That depends on the question. How much longer have I to live? Years, my dear. No, Doctor. I want an honest answer. Please. It's imperative that I know... 
I don't know really, my dear. I'm going as fast as the horses can go, Mum. Faster, Talbot. We won't accomplish anything at all if you lose self-control, Dina. Oh, I'm sorry, Charles, but I've the most dreadful foreboding. Foreboding? I thought Madeline and Roderick were as close as brother and sister could possibly be. They were until about a year ago. What caused the change? Well, I'd been living at the house of Russia for about four months, and Roderick suddenly became, well, nervous, jumping. He'd lock himself up in his room for days. He was morbid, frightfully morbid. It sounds like a depression of spirit. Oh, it's way deeper than that. Madeline fell ill at the same time. And then the horrible reddish rains began to fall. Red rain? Dina, really? Oh, you'll see. The first day those rains began to fall, the rift between Mad and Roderick widened. Until now, their hate is a living thing. It fills the house. They seem to be battling constantly for possession of each other's soul. Charles, look. Look ahead. There's the house. And the rain. Look at the rain. Yes. Red rain. Well, Charles, uh, do come in. We, we've been waiting for you. Well, it's good to see you again, Roderick. Come in, Dina. Don't stand there staring at me. It's been a long time since I've last seen you, Rod. Yes, uh, a long time. Let me take your coat, Charles. I'll hang it up. Thank you, dear. My sister's waiting, Charles. You'd better go right up. Yes, uh, of course. I'd better warn you. Madeline's delirious. She doesn't quite know what she's saying. Sometime. Uh, Rod, uh, why don't you come up with me? She expressed a desire to see you alone. Ooh, red rain, eh? Delirium. I wonder what could happen. You're tuned to Scream Radio, hosted by Jimmy Flame. <laughs> and now we return you to Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. <laughs> I had to see you alone. Madeline, don't try to sit up. You'll only weaken yourself. Sit over here, Charles, next to me. You're the only person I can trust, and you must promise to do exactly as I say. Of course, of course. Remember what I told you years ago. Remember about Roderick and me. I told you then that he and I were more than twins. Well, that was just childish fancy. I wish to God it were. Those suspicions have all been proven these last few months. Roderick and I are, are only one person. Not two. We have two earthly bodies, but we share one soul. When Charles and I were born, our shoulders were attached. The day of our birth, we were separated. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean you share one soul. I've never been able to feel anything for myself. His thoughts are my thoughts. His tears are my tears. His weaknesses are mine. Don't you understand, Charles? Are you sure of this, Madeline? Positive. His mind has the initiative. He doesn't respond to my emotions. Because I had none. None. I'm cold without him. Don't you see? My earthly body is wasting away. But my soul is not my own. As long as he's alive, Charles, the power of his life will keep me living. Madeline, Lady Madeline, you mustn't even think of it. Oh, it's true, though. I have a living death. I'll be buried alive. Unable to live. Unable to die. Madeline. That's why I called you here. Promise me now, Charles. You'll never allow my coffin to be sealed. Keep my body in this house. You must rest, Madeline. Stop talking. Do you death. promise, Charles? Promise. Yes, yes, of course I do. Don't, don't tell Roderick Charles, ever. He'll seal me in my tomb alive. Madeline, my, my dear. Every mortal is entitled to his own soul. If I can't rest in death. If, if I can't rest in death, I'll return from the grave and take him with me. Thank <laughs> you. 